flight table with this, all right? And I just changed some problem answers, so we might not have something nice to work for. But again, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things. Graph in the parent, all right? Parent graph, we know cross that one comma zero. It looks something like that, right? We have transformations. What are your transformations? You're going to shift to left and reflect the x-axis. This is all stuff off your notes. If anything, please just write down the transformations. If you can't graph it, write down the transformations. I am much happier to see you write down the transformations than you to show something from your calculator that you have absolutely no idea of anything else what it's doing. Please just write down the transformations. Yes? Because uh, remember the formula is a times log base b of x times x minus h plus k. So what that means, it's always the opposite when it's inside the function, OK? Um, so we shift to left and reflect the x-axis. Um, so again, let's do our xy table. And when we're doing our xy table, I just want to do the xy table for the general function. And then we'll reflect everything. Yes? Why do you reflect it because it's x plus No, I'm going to reflect it because it's being multiplied by a negative. And if you remember our general, general information, when we multiply a negative outside the function, that reflects over the x-axis. If I multiply inside the function, that reflects over the y-axis. A little FYI. So let's go ahead and do a table for y equals log base 3 of x. No transformations are going on, right? Let's just do the xy table for this. So if I do an xy table for this, if I plug in, what do we want to do? So we rewrite the exponential because it makes a little bit more sense, right? Well, I could put 0. If I did 0, I would get 1 for y. right? And then I could also do 3. And I could say 1. Yep, right? So now let's graph those. That's going to be, again, I'm re-graphing my parent function, but I'm getting a little bit more detailed with two points. So I have 1 comma 0, and I have 1, 1, 2, 3 comma 1. So the graph looks like this. However, I'm reflecting this graph over. So therefore, then instead of this point going 3 up 1, I now go 3 down 1. And then I am now shifting this graph two units to the left. So instead of um, going over 1, now I'm going to go to the left 1. Instead of going over 1, 2, 3, I'm going to have this point right there. All right. Now you can see this asymptote. The asymptote used to be at. Um, x equals 0. Well, if I shift left 2, where is my new asymptote? Well, x equals negative 2. And please, guys, graph the asymptote. Make sure you plot that in there. It's easy not to plot it when it's on the, on this one, on the axes. But if we've been shifted and we have a new asymptote, draw that asymptote. That's telling us the, where the graph is approaching. Yes? How do you get those two points on the bottom? Because remember, it reflected. We flipped it over the x-axis, right? And then this, it gets shifted over. So I reflected it. So that's my reflect. And then here's my shift. What was that other random one? This one? Yeah. That's that one. When you reflect it, does that change or move? No. no. So the reflect, the point stays the same. And then I just shifted it over two units. So my graph is going to look something like that. All right, now let's find the x-intercept. Again, x-intercept, f of x has to equal 0 or y equals 0. 0 equals negative log base 3 of x plus 2. Ooh, how do we solve this? It was easy last problem, right? But again, what can we do? What, what did we do last time? You put it into exponential form. So we have 3 to the 0. Um, I'm sorry, before we put it in exponential form, let's get rid of this negative. So we have 0 equals log base 3 of x plus 2. Exponential form, 3 to the 0 equals x plus 2. Does, it's OK if it's an expression and not just a number. Can we solve this, though, now? There you go. OK. Ta-da.